All right, chapter 13, Sophie. The freakazoid just might be my good luck charm. A few days after my first driving lesson, dad resurfaced. His job involved a lot of traveling, but this time he said he was going to be around for a few months. So now we can see about turning you into a licensed driver, he beamed at me. My mother gave him the look. Sophie was really disappointed when he didn't show up last week. Mother, I said warningly, I didn't need a trained social worker nagging interference for me. Dad chose not to pick up on the vibe. Well, I'm here now, he said cheerfully, let's go. And we did. I have to say, I wish he was as patient as Cap, but now that our house guest was on the cop's A-list for Grand Theft School Bus, it would probably be too risky to go out driving with him anymore. Cap was doing his Tai Chi under the weeping willow when I maneuvered Dad's sob into the driveway. God bless America. Dad was astonished. What's the stray your mom brought home? The very same, I sighed. Does he have to do that right out in the open in broad daylight? He used to stick closer to home, I admitted. I persuaded him not to. Three buckets of water did the trick. One thing about Cap, it did take a brick f building to fall on him. Dad laughed. You're a saint to put up with it, Soph. This is cruel and unusual. We agreed on that, especially the part about be me being a saint. That was another advantage of having Dad around. Mom was so nice, so kind, so understanding, that she made the rest of us seem like insensitive jerks. But Dad took one look at Cap Anderson and instantly understood my side of the story. Moments like this really made me miss him when he was away, which was most of the time. Dad waved to our house guest as he walked into the door. Nice moves, kid. I used to do a little kendo in my younger days. He could make conversation with a brick wall, part of his salesman DNA. Cap looked disapproving. That's with swords, isn't it? Rain could never teach me anything that used weapons. Dad nodded in agreement. We trained with padded sticks so no one got hurt. Pretty purely ceremonial. It was all about the pressure points and energy flow. I'll show you one of those days. To me, he said, gotta run. But first, he reached into his pocket and pulled out a small jewelry box. Belated birthday presents. Yeah, seven months belated. I took it from him, thrilled. It was a silver bangle set with multicolored stones. Love it. Thanks, Dad. I was about to try it on when he snatched it back. Not so fast. I just want to make sure you like it before I have it engraved. Engraved. Cap stared at the bracelet, hypnotized. That, he said in a hushed voice, is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. Leave it to him. The kid grew up surrounded by wooden planks and fertilizer. The shiniest object in his life was probably an old pitchfork. No wonder he took a few rhinestones for crown jewels. Dad tried to make it into a joke. I just guess you don't get out much. I didn't get out at all until I came here. We never left Garland except to lay supplies. Dad looked profoundly interested. I forgot you're from Garland. Sophie's mom grew up there. What's it like these days? There followed a description of this year's turnip crop that would have put a, soon a Tasmanian devil to sleep. Dad was classy. He looked totally flat fascinated by the whole thing. But every now and then he would shoot me a smirk that had me thinking sad thoughts just to keep from cracking up. Oh, it was great to have dad back again.